we've gone through and decided now, here is the, here's the things we can throw away, here's the things we need to keep. So let's actually rewrite this um, to be a little cleaner. Uh, let's do that here. So this is, let's see, so this becomes, uh, I'll just write it out, uh, D in black, hopefully. So this becomes D U bar DT plus D U bar squared DX plus D U bar V bar DY plus one over uh, T int of, let's see, the integral from zero to T int of this D uh, U prime squared DX DT plus one over T int of zero to T int integral uh, D U prime V prime DY DT. And that all equals on the right-hand side, minus one over rho DP infinity DX DX plus new uh, D squared U bar DY squared. Right, that's our simplified form. Um, so why did I, what we kept it as this because we actually don't know how to evaluate, like we don't have a model for U prime other than to say that we know it's some variability around the mean, we don't really have a model for it. So we don't have a way of kind of writing a function for this uh, quite yet. So we just leave it in this integral form for now. Um, but what we do wanna do is, is there's actually one more simplif simplification that we can make here. And that is if we make the observation that, you know, as we're looking at our boundary layer, um, let's maybe do, do a quick sketch here again. So if we look at our, if we look at our, our velocities, if we, uh, this is velocity, if we pick out our U velocity, right? U velocity is something up here varying around. The Y velocity is varying around, but it's, it's down here, much lower. So this is uh, U and this is V, not, not Y, this is V. Right, our U velocity and our V velocity are varying by the same amount. The fluctuations are the same order of magnitude, but the V velocity is much lower than the U velocity. Um, we also notice that things kind of change much more quickly in Y than they do in X, right? Just because the boundary layer is so thin compared to the, to the X geometry. So if we make those observations, we see the fluctuations about the same, but things are changing much more slowly in X, we can actually decide to throw out that U prime squared term. Why? Because it's with respect, it's changed with respect to X. So we're taking the change of variability, which is the same between U and V with respect to X. And that's changing very slowly in a boundary layer compared to the same change where one of those things is where it's with respect to Y. Hopefully, hopefully you see that makes sense. We can actually say that this term is unimportant compared to uh, the second term, the second integral there. All right, so then we do that and we end up with, uh, I guess I won't bother writing it out, but we end up with this, this equation that we had up here so this, this equation that I wrote up at the top of this slide, that's our simplified form. Okay. One last thing we need to do um, to get this back to something that looks like what you'd see in the textbook is uh, we're gonna kind of reintroduce our, uh, let's see, reintroduce our, our definition of the continuity equation, kind of go backwards from what we just did uh, to get back to something that you'd actually see, because remember we're kind of in the control volume uh, form right now. So if we write this out, uh, let's see, we end up with, uh, do I need to write this out? Yeah, so let, let's just write it out this way. So if I write it out and kind of collect things together, I'm just rewriting what's on top here. It's gonna be D U bar DT plus U bar D U bar DX plus V bar D U bar y plus u bar uh, d u bar dx plus d v bar dy. That's equal to minus one over rho dp infinity d 
dx plus, uh, let's see, plus nu times d squared u bar dy squared. Uh, and then we'll bring this, the, the last integral over to the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side as well, I guess that means we're subtracting it. So that's minus one over t int of the integral zero to t int d u prime b prime. Let's rewrite this. It's d u prime v prime uh, d y with respect to time. Okay, so just rewriting that to point out that we've collected things together. If you look at this long enough, you can kind of see how what, what we did here, but just collected some terms together. And then we make this observation again that this here, this here is zero by continuity. Okay, uh, by, by the fact that continuity is equal to zero. Okay, so we have that now we can uh, rewrite in terms of the thing you're gonna actually see in uh, the textbooks, which is um, this. So one last time we're writing it, d u bar dt plus u bar d u bar dx plus v bar d u bar dy is equal to minus one over rho d p infinity dx plus nu d squared u bar dy squared plus our integral uh, here, which is minus one over t int integral zero to t int d u prime v prime dy uh, dt. Hopefully I got that okay. I have an extra bracket here. Okay, okay so let's, the reason I rewrote it, um, not because I like writing, but because I want to actually label some of these things in, in a useful way. So this, uh, these first terms here, uh, these first terms here are the inertia of the average flow, right? You can kind of see u bar, u bar du dx, v bar du dy. This is the inertia of the average flow. Right. Keeping in mind that we've done, we've now gone through this, decided a lot of the average values just go to their average when we, when we integrate. So we're left with this governing equation that says, this is for the average flow, this is the inertia. And then to correct that, we have to introduce this stuff with the variability on, uh, in the last term on the right-hand side. Okay, uh, this term here, right, this is our pressure force. Uh, let's see, this term here, this is viscous shear. And then this last term, which is the new thing, is our momentum transport. Momentum transport uh, due to turbulent eddies. So now we have, we have our new equation, but we've corrected it to not just be in terms of the average, but to be in terms of the average plus some additional contribution, right? This additional contribution due to the turbulent eddies that are occurring in, in the turbulent flow. Okay, questions? Wow, this is going quickly, at least for me. <laughs> Maybe not for you, okay. Uh, so, okay, let's look down here and let's see, we, we did this for um, our momentum equation. Uh, we can do something similar for the energy equation, but it's, it took long enough, let's not do that. But here you end up with, these are the, the equivalents. So we started with, in our laminar boundary layer, our governing equations on the left-hand side. And then the contribution of the, uh, the turbulence is, is shown here. So here we have, this thing we just derived here. Uh, this is the additional contribution. You can see it's exactly the same as the thing on the left, except we've added this, this contribution. So here we have on the energy side, you'll notice what's happening, right? We, we went through before and said a change in uh, V, a, a disturbance in V is gonna induce 
a negative response in you. Okay, it turns out the same idea is true. If we have a change in V for energy, where you have some a temperature gradient in the boundary layer, you're moving, say, a hot fluid up, uh, and that's going to cause, uh, or say, what a cold fluid, which way would it be? Depending on the definition of the gradient, right? Uh, just to be consistent, you move the V, v prime positive, that's going to cause a, a drop in temperature. So it must be that we're assuming cooling here. All right, so there's a, there's a correlation between those two things in the, in the variability, and it shows up in that last term. Okay. All right, so that's the, the summary of the Reynolds averaging. And then uh, again, one last thing we can do, which I've kind of written out for you here, is it's helpful to, to think about this stuff over here, this, this, uh, these two terms. It's helpful to think about them together as kind of a common, uh, what do you call it? Like they, they sort of jointly introduce viscous stress or uh, they sort of jointly affect the, the viscosity of the turbulent flow. So we can actually bring uh, both of these inside this DDY term, right? And uh, do a little rearranging and you end up with this. Okay, and so what this is, uh, sorry, we can do the same thing down here for, for temperature. So it's these uh, two pieces here. They kind of combine to form uh, that term there. Um, but if we actually stop and look at this for a second, what we're saying is that uh, turbulent, uh, sorry, turbulent mixing, let's see this thing here, right, this, this turbulent mixing and viscous stress are both ways of transporting momentum, right? And so, and so we kind of combine them together and they become this effective combined property for, for flows, turbulent flows. And in fact, if you, if you look at this for, actually for turbulent flows, you're gonna see that the, the molecular part of it, that first part of it, when the flow is really turbulent, that's usually dominated by the second part of that, that term there, yeah. Um, it would be K molecular. Let's see. Are you looking here? Yeah. Yeah. So this would be, right. This is the conductivity. So, right. This is a good point. So this, this whole first term here, this is just Fourier's law, right? So this is molecular heat transport due to conduction in the fluid. Like, and that's, that's always going to be present. It's, it's even in a turbulent flow, that's always present. It doesn't go away. It's just that it becomes really unimportant <laughs> compared to once you have this turbulent mixing, you have this V prime is significant. That's going to be really driving the heat transfer, uh, the, the energy transfer in the, in the boundary layer in the Y direction. 